Thanks for coming back for another episode of this Growing Avocado Trees from Seed series. This is the fifth episode, days 88 through 103. There's a new leaf at the top, as you can see. It's sort of a reddish brown, mostly red. And it looks very healthy. They're very perky like that when they first come out. And you can see two more leaves coming out. So as long as you're getting continuous leaf growth, you're doing good. Those red dots, like I said in the last episode, are not signs of disease, but rather that's just the way this thing looks. The established leaves could be a lot more green. They look sort of a sickly yellow. And upon closer inspection, actually, it looks like this leaf is, is burned. You know, I don't think it's the aspirin or the vitamins or anything fertilizer splashing on the leaves. But the overall picture of health still looks pretty good. And as you can see from this view, you know, nothing really seems to be wrong other than those worrisome burns. So I'm going to go ahead and take a spray bottle filled with distilled water and spray that leaf off just to see if it's some kind of problem due to residue being on there. Although I think I've done this before, so I'm not sure that that's the problem. So it'll take some time to find out if this does anything, but... You know, in case it does, uh, I'll have another piece of data to work with. Otherwise, it's quite worrisome. So I can't detect any signs of stickiness or residue on there. You know, if there was something left on there, I'd be able to feel it. Especially after getting it wet, it should be sticky. Um, but even dry, you should be able to see anything. Uh, on leaves, it's usually very obvious. So I'm going to move this pot to next to the sliding door because I think it's getting a little bit too much sun as hard as that is to believe and I'm gonna water from the bottom this is just distilled water you know I'm done for a while um, fertilizing with vitamins and fertilizer it's just too much after a while but I noticed last time that I just had it in an hour for you know not even an hour maybe 30 20 minutes um, in the shade and the leaves all perked up. Maybe it's a issue of dehydration. Just can't get enough um, You know water in from the root system into the leaves So, you know a few minutes later. I changed my mind and I moved it to that corner It's day 93 So three days after putting the pot in the corner This is my balcony at night with the light on that looks kind of cool, but otherwise in this kind of low artificial light situation the videography is just bad resolution doesn't look too hot I mean it's the same resolution but it's still uh, the quality really suffers so as you can see the leaves have perked up the new leaf over there looks great uh, the plant has greened a lot more some of these leaves have turned significantly darker green they're more verdant looking but as you can see, there's like three leaves and that little thing that I keep calling cotyledon that just look unhealthy. So on day 93, I decided, you know, after looking at this, maybe I should put it in full shade because it still gets too much afternoon direct sunlight. All right, it's day 94. It's one day, actually less than that, after I moved the pot into the shadow of this table. So it'll never get direct sunlight at this angle. It's too close to the edge of the table and the leaves all look much more green than they used to. Everything looks perky too so things are really starting to look up. However there are some leaves that are like this one's underdeveloped and it's just very yellow. Same with that cotyledon. That leaf is you know, very yellow green. Kind of looks like it has shades or shadows on it. I think there's been a fair bit of photo bleaching going on uh, with these avocado leaves being in full sun. I read that avocado seedlings typically grow up in the shade of their parent trees, information that could have served me very well. If I had known beforehand, I wouldn't have placed this pot high up on a table in full sun for several afternoon hours a day. The tip of that cotyledon leaf is burned. It wasn't like that, you know, a few days ago, so I'm thinking some sort of program leaf death. Uh, the burns on these two leaves look pretty bad as well. It's progressing. So day 96, three days of full shade. 
plus 20k lux of reflective light off the sliding door of my balcony. If I stand in the way you can see it's basically like indoor lighting levels very low. So it's in complete shade but since there's a sliding door there it gets close to 20,000 lux that's still defined as within the range of direct sunlight. It's 90k up here you know 900 times 100. So the burns on these original six leaves plus the cotyledon are seemingly worsening as time goes on with each passing day even though the light intensity is no longer anywhere near the 90,000 to 100 plus thousand that it was for several hours a day before. The new leaves don't look as red as they used to. Maybe the photo bleaching uh, altered the coloration and just made it all very light because the chlorophyll uh, discs were getting fried by excessive electron activity generated by photons hitting you know for shade plants they have very large chlorophyll discs in the chloroplasts and that is very very effective at capturing lower levels of light so the leaf on top has a more of a luster to it because it's new these older ones that have been photo bleached or essentially sunburned all look a lot less glossy and they look like they're dying so that cotyledon looks like it's finished and hopefully the plant can recycle the nutrients and suck them out before the leaves are shed I think this is one of those leaves that looked like it was going to be in bad shape but recovered and became the longest greenest leaf the rest don't look that hot anymore so as you can see 20,000 lux of reflective light is still pretty bright uh, some people would probably even need sunglasses for that. It seems to be an amazing coincidence that I found the exact perfect level of light for this plant. On day 100, the photo bleach leaves are burning up on their own. They're on a auto-destruct or self-destruct program. It's almost like apoptosis in animal cells, but, you know, for an entire organ. Or, I don't know if you'd call a leaf an organ. Um... But yeah, this thing looks like it's literally getting burned by fire or cigarette lighter. And this leaf on top is going to go as well. It has all these yellow shadows, so to speak, on the leaf. It's been photo bleached pretty badly. This new leaf had a kink in it to begin with at the very end. It's always like that, but it's looking really healthy. This might go. Uh, this one is toast for sure. That's new leaf. That's uh, still kind of yellow at the base, just a little bit yellow, but it's longest and one of the longest and greenest leaves. Not as green anymore as one of the new leaves. This one was burned at the tip. I've shown that in episodes past. Well, I think mostly the last episode, so that's going to go. And as you can see, my plant is looking more and more robust. It really sucks to have to replace all those new leaves, but... You know, the stem itself, it's green, it's very rigid, and it doesn't seem to be responding to phototropism as much anymore. So, yeah, I basically spun around the pot so that it's sort of bent towards the underside of the table, and hopefully it'll just straighten now. And I hope I don't have to keep doing that. That's kind of bothersome. But for even leaf development's sake, I'll have to spin this pot around and have it at different angles every few days I think just because this uh, reflective sunlight deal only comes from one direction so it's questionable you know maybe whether I should have less light or more light but that's not really something I can control at this point um, these are still sort of artificial conditions and I'm watering with more distilled water from the bottom although I probably don't need to you know uh, vitamin soaked patch at the top just looks like it's wet all the time even though it's been dry just like everything else and I think I got this thing down you know it's day 103 so it's been a while like what has it been 10 days of reflective sunlight 20k and I nearly have a new set of six nice green verdant leaves to replace the uh, six that I lost or even more so I imagine that these leaves will just get bigger than ever 
and they'll exceed the perimeter of the pot like they're doing now. I mean, that one leaf that's close to us, that's basically beyond the edge. And the stem is short, the leaves are just coming out like crazy. I'd say on average it's been one new leaf, primordia, every day, but it's rapidly approaching the rate of almost one every day. Or at least it seems like it. All these leaves were replaced at maybe the rate of one every two days. It's pretty amazing considering how big they are. That thing's fried to a crisp. Sort of looks like a giant leaf mantis or, you know, some other kind of uh, spiny leaf insect. Something like that, you know. Because of the curl, looks like the abdomen of a giant insect. And likewise for that one, it's curling. Uh, both leaves are dying, so they're not really interfering with each other but this is quite the amazing sight I've never seen anything like this but it just goes to show how important the light levels are for plant growth and every plant has its own conditions you might see pictures of avocado trees growing in full sun in fields and orchards but the reality is if you're trying to rear young saplings or seedlings you might need different conditions and if I hadn't gone on the internet and done a search, I wouldn't have known that this actually grows in shade when it's young. But then again, you know, I wouldn't have looked on the internet if I didn't have any problems. So sometimes you don't do research until a new problem comes out. So that's the cotyledon in its shed. Thanks for watching my fifth episode, and stay tuned for a sixth.